OK, so I'm going to go through a bunch of 700 to 800 level questions. These are all about as hard as they get and apply the methods in the short guide to solving them. Now, I'm going to go through quite slowly and try to identify sort of everything I can see that's wrong with the sentences. That means I might go overkill in terms of actually eliminating all the answers. But even then, I also will miss some things. So what I recommend you do is try to solve each question before I do it. Uh, work out everything you can see wrong with it. Don't worry too much about speed. Um, just make sure you eliminate options based only on sort of things you're absolutely sure are wrong. Uh, and then see if what I eliminate on is similar to what you do. And if you spot other things that are actually valid, then great. Okay, so the first question. Just looking at this, this sentence, I'm scanning through and looking for triggers. So I immediately see when I'm looking at the answers, that we've got a difference between it's and there. So the first thing that that makes me think about is plurals or pronouns. So we've got the gear falcon, singular, and has, singular. So effectively, I better get rid of anything with plural pronouns. So there, uh, they, and so that's allowed us to already get rid of C and D. Okay, now, looking for other decision points well we've got the obvious one of greater versus more that's another obvious difference so greater than is not used all that often but when it can be used is for when we specifically when we're talking about the numbers of something so its numbers are now five times greater than da, 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 and that's actually the correct use which means we're allowed to get rid of b okay and so we're down to a and e for which we are looking at the main difference and i would say the main difference is actually this semicolon compared to a, a comma and what, what's the difference well effectively the comma means that this is just sort of a bit of extra description uh in e whereas the semicolon means we must have a separate clause so what's what's sentence a saying well it's saying the gear falcon has a, survived a close grip brush with extinction and then separately sort of to illuminate that it's saying the Gear Falcon's numbers are now five times greater than when the use of DDT was sharply restricted in the early 1970s. So that sounds okay. It's nice and clear. The whole sentence is about the fact that it survived close brush with extinction, but its numbers have now grown. That's clearly what it's conveying. Whereas if we look at E, we've got the Gear Falcon and Octopoda Frey has survived a close brush with extinction. Now with numbers five times greater than when the use of DDT was... Da -da 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 -da. So I think that's much less clear. It's not, it's not awful, but what it's saying is it's, it's drawing less attention to the fact that, um, as in it's drawing less attention to the fact that the Gear Falcon's numbers are five times greater, as in now with numbers five times greater, well, it's not as clear that we're talking about the Gear Falcon. Um, and I would just say on a structural front, it's not as strong as A. So hopefully you agree with that and we can pick A and get rid of E. Okay, so question two. So the first thing I notice, this is a very long sentence. So I really want to ideally try and cut it down if I can. Um, it doesn't actually look like there's that much useless information, but I'll do my best. So as activity, don't care where the activity is, becomes more sophisticated. Not only are thieves able to divert cash from company bank accounts, they can also pilfer valuable information. Okay, so even though this will be important later on, all of this is actually just descriptive information they can also pilfer valuable information and then then they're just telling us what the information is so they can also pilfer valuable information and sell the data to competitors so actually that sentence number a looks okay whereas if we do the same kind of thing to b we can say they can also pilfer valuable information and selling the data to competitors so that doesn't make any sense so we've got rid of b already now, C, we've, not, we've no longer got the they can. So 
not only are thieves able to divert cash from company bank accounts, also pilfering valuable information. So that, well, it either doesn't make any sense or what it's saying is that when they divert cash from company bank accounts, at the same time, in the same act, they're also pilfering valuable information, which is not, you can't steal valuable information from a bank. Well, I mean, you can, but you can't steal business development strategies from a bank account. And so C is just out based on, you know, it, it doesn't actually mean what they want it to mean. Um, whereas D, not only are thieves able to divert cash from company bank accounts, but also pilfer valuable information such as Okay, so pilfer valuable information, so it's slightly better. Um, but also pilfer valuable information to sell the data to competitors. So that suggests now, what's the difference between A and D, now that we've got rid of all the sort of distracting part in the middle? Well, it's saying that they are pilfering valuable information to sell the data to competitors, as in, the reason that they are pilfering valuable information is in order to, as in, is literally why are they pilfering? It's so that they are able to sell. Whereas actually they're, they're sort of separate things as in they are pilfering and then they are selling. So I would say that A is more correct than D in that sense, just because you don't pilfer. Well, I mean, you could argue that they are pilfering in order to sell, but it's not pilfering to sell or pilfer to sell. Um, and then E, not only are thieves able to divert cash from company bank accounts, but also pilfering. So not only are thieves able to divert cash from company bank accounts, but also it should be pilfer, not pilfering are thieves able to pilfer so e is out and so we're left with a okay so next question looks like a long sentence except the underlined part isn't that long so just scanning through it for uh triggers we've got to appear to have been equipped so we've got past perfect involved and so well they were equipped and then they disappeared and were unable to adapt something. So they were no longer well equipped. So past perfect does look like the right thing to be using, uh, which means that, well, A is out because they don't appear, they do not currently appear as equipped. They clearly appear in the past. Um, C is out for the same reason. Uh, D is also out, even though that is in the past, the Neanderthals, they currently, even though the Neanderthals are no longer around, they are still currently appearing, as in they appear to have been equipped. So we're currently seeing how they appear. So it's not actually appeared. Uh, and for that same reason, we can get rid of E. And so the answer is B. And the only test was really on the past perfect. Okay, so the next question, we've got uh, clearly a list, so it's going to be parallelism. So for the farmer who takes care to keep, well, first of all, actually, them cool. So that's plural. Uh, and so we can immediately get rid of B and D because we've got a plural, them. And so then just looking at uh, whether parallelism works well for the farmer who takes care to colon keep them cool provided takes care to sorry oops not to <clears throat> so the farmer who takes care to keep them provided with high energy feed and takes care to keep them milked regularly, Holstein cows will produce an average of 2,275 gallons of milk 
each per year. So E is the only one that works. And so we can get rid of A and C. Okay. And so here we've got a short sentence and clearly it's it's just about equally likely versus as likely, etc. So on questions like this, which are effectively on idioms, uh, what I like to do is just sort of think about another sentence, how you'd say it. And so hopefully intuitively you'd say, um, I am just as likely to as something else. So because we've got an as later on, then we want as likely to earlier. And so we can get rid of A, we can get rid of B, we can get rid of C, we can get rid of... Oh, well, okay, so we can get rid of... Oh, oh, we can get rid of D because it's as likely that, and it should be as likely too. And so we immediately settle on E. Okay, and then this question, it is pretty sort of confusing to make any sense of in the first place. Um, but let's just see if we can make sense. So heavy commitment by an executive to a course of action, especially if it has worked well in the past, makes it likely well okay so what, what are we actually saying so heavy commitment by an, exe an executive to a course of action fine that's just description especially if it has worked well in the past e.g if the course of action has worked well in the past makes it likely well it what makes the only it could be the course of action and the course of action can't be likely to miss signs of incipient trouble. So we want to talk about a, an executive, makes the executive likely to miss things. So A is out. Um, and similarly for B, an executive who is heavily committed to a course of action, especially one that worked well in the past, so that's on a modifier. So if we get rid of the modifier, then we have an executive who is heavily committed makes missing signs of incipient trouble that that doesn't it doesn't make sense so we can get rid of b um so for c well an executive who is heavily committed to a course of action is likely to miss in or misinterpret signs of incipient trouble when they do appear especially if it has worked well in the past so that's actually not bad um the only issue i can see there is that well what's it has worked well in the past well, that's that's referring all the way back to the course of action. And so, I mean, there's there's nothing hugely wrong, um, except that should probably be uh, nearer. So we'll keep C for the moment, but see if we can do anything better. Uh, well, <clears throat> executives, I notice the apostrophe immediately, and so that means that actually it's not even, uh, we can't refer to the executives in terms of, um, who, that's not being uh, referred to. That's it, it means that the being heavily committed to a course of action is what's being referred to later on. Um, so when they say executives being heavily com committed to a course of action, especially if it's worked well in the past, makes them likely to miss signs of incipient trouble or, well, I mean, there's, well, OK, so there's lots of problems, but them can't actually refer to executives. It's it's referring to being heavily committed. So that that's already a mistake. Um, but then also makes them likely to miss. So makes them likely to miss signs of incipient trouble or to misinterpret. So misinterpreting them doesn't make sense. We can get rid of D. And then finally, being heavily committed to a course of action, especially one that has worked well in the past, is likely to make an executive miss signs of incipient trouble or misinterpret them. So that's that's fixed the the parallelism, so that's fine, when they do appear. And so that's a lot that's similar to C, but a lot better simply because we've got clearly the course of action is the thing that's worked well in the past, and it's making an exe an executive miss signs of incipient trouble or misinterpret them when they do appear. So the them is only referring to signs because it's the only plural. So effectively E is the best option. Okay. 
starfish with anywhere from five to eight arms have a strong regenerative ability. And if one arm is lost, it quickly replaces it. So I immediately see that there's a singular. Uh, and we're talking about starfish have. OK, so you might think starfish looks like it's singular, but the plural of fish is fish. So um, effectively, what we've got is the word have to tell us that it's plural. So A is immediately out because it'd be it. Um, and that's all we can do for that first thing. Um, okay, and so now we have Okay, so now we have sometimes by the animal overcompensating. One arm is lost, it is quickly replaced with the animal sometimes overcompensating and growing an extra one or two. So that, that one works well, parallel wise, overcompensating and growing. So sometimes by the animal overcompensating, sometimes by the animal growing an extra one or two. Okay. Um, Whereas C, if they lose one arm, they quickly replace it. Well, OK, so D is just out because if they lose one arm, they are quickly replaced. You can't you can't replace one arm with a they. Um, and so what's the difference between B, C and E? Well, So C, if we look at, so we, we're fine with B for the moment, so we'll keep that in. Um, if we look at C, what's the big difference? Well, it's saying, instead of it saying with the animals sometimes overcompensating and growing extra one or two, now it's saying they lose, it, when they lose one arm, they quickly replace it, sometimes by the animal overcompensating. So it's not actually, it's not the overcompensating that's that's replacing the arm. It's the fact that they they replace the arm and also sometimes overcompensate. So, whereas C is actually saying that they, they replace it by overcompensating. So C is out. And then we're just choosing between B and E. And so, They're actually relatively close together um, in terms of the strength. Um, I prefer B simply because it's it's got a nice parallel structure with the animal sometimes overcompensating and growing an extra arm or two. Um, though E is not awful it's simply saying that the the way in which it overcompensates is growing an extra arm or two um i think if i had to be forced to pick one i'd go with b uh which simply because of the the better parallel structure although d wasn't too bad and so sometimes you just have to uh pick the best op the least worst option Okay, so although she was considered among her contemporaries to be the better poet than her husband, so that, that already strikes me as strange, later Elizabeth Barrett Browning was overshadowed by his success. So what are the problems with A? Well, effectively, the subject, we seem to be introducing it all the way at the end of the sentence, and we've been referring to she and her. Um, so while that's not a fatal error, it's not particularly good, so that's not making me like A. But this, to be the better poet than her husband, well, you'd either say to be the better poet, as a standalone phrase, or you'd say to be a better poet. Than. So to be the better poet is not actually um, 
a comparison. It's not, it's not a comparison in the same way. So we can get rid of A. And B, for a similar reason, considered among her contemporaries as a better poet. Well, no, it, it would be considered among her contemporaries to be a better poet. And so if you're not sure on things like that, wording you think sounds strange, come up with a sentence, a separate sentence, and just use it, use, use the phrase, and you should sort of naturally see which phrasing sounds more natural and comes to you um, and choose based on that. And so then we have C. Later overshadowed by the success of her husband, Elizabeth Bar Browning's poetry, so the poetry is overshadowed, that's now our subject, the poetry was overshadowed by the success of her husband. Well, that's that's possible. That's still okay. Um, but then we've got had been, which is past perfect. And so what that sentence is now saying, because it's past perfect, well, that's that it had been considered among her contemporaries to be better than that of her husband. But then they no longer thought that, which while it's grammatically probably okay, um, I don't think that's what the sentence is trying to say, as in, I believe that the sentence is getting at the fact that even though her contemporaries thought that she was the better poet, her husband was more successful. But whereas C is saying that at first they thought that her poetry was was better, but then later on they, they changed their minds. And I don't think that's the point of the sentence. So we can get rid of C. And then in D, although Elizabeth Browning's success was later overshadowed by that of her husband, so that's okay, it's her success being overshadowed by the success of her husband, so that's okay. Among her contemporaries, she was considered the better poet, so that, that seems okay. And then E, Elizabeth Barrett Browning's poetry was considered among her contemporaries as better than her husband. So, okay, there's lots of things wrong there, but right, what are we comparing? We're saying poetry, uh, and then a modifier. Well, as in was considered, fine, but Elizabeth's poetry was considered as better than her husband. And so we're comparing poetry to a husband, which, I mean, okay, you may maybe you have to make the comparison, but it's clearly not what the sentence is trying to say, and you shouldn't really compare poetry to a person. So we can get rid of he, which leaves us only really with uh, D. Okay. Australian embryologists have found evidence that suggests that the elephant is descended from an aquatic animal and its trunk originally evolving as a kind of snorkel. So, well, either that, that and comma and so either we have parallelism, which I, I mean, where would you put? It's um, so we we certainly don't have uh, parallelism anywhere, um, and so therefore it must be a separate, independent clause. But its trunk originally evolving as a kind of snorkel that that has to be a stand on its own, and it doesn't. So therefore we can rule out a. Australian embryologists have found evidence that has suggested. The elephant descended from an aquatic animal, its trunk originally evolving as a kind of snorkel. Well, who's its? Is it the aquatic animal? Or is it the elephant? And I would say that even though ambiguity usually isn't a fatal flaw, here it, it actually is completely ambiguous. So we just don't know who its is. It could be the aquatic animal or the elephant. Um, and it, they're both equally valid, so B is out. Australian embryologists have found evidence suggesting that this elephant had descended. Ah, okay. So as you can see, the past perfect comes up quite a lot. And what does that mean? Well, it, it descended from an aquatic animal and then it stopped being descended from them, which doesn't make any sense. If you're descended from an aquatic animal, you, you will be descended from that same animal forever. So C is just immediately out. And that means that D is also out for this exactly the same reason. And so hopefully E looks okay. Australian embryologists have found evidence to suggest that the elephant is descended from an aquatic animal and that its trunk originally evolved as a kind of snorkel. So you might think that we have the same problem with the its, except now we've got and. And so now what we have is parallelism. So and that, 
which is a form of closed marked parallelism. So I'm just looking for another that, which is earlier on in the sentence. So let's just see that this works. Australian embryologists have found evidence to suggest that the ele elephant is, is descended from an aquatic animal. Okay, Australian em embryologists have found evidence to suggest that its trunk originally evolved as a kind of snorkel. And that's fine. Where it's, we're allowed the it's because it's talking about an elephant. Okay, a professor at the university has taken a, sat a sabbatical to research on James Baldwin's books that Baldwin wrote in France while he was living there. Well, okay, so probably an easier question. The first thing I immediately notice is just Baldwin and Baldwin. So that's just um, completely um, superfluous. It's just redundant. So A is definitely going to be wrong. Um, and to research on so i that jumps out as sort of wrong it, what do you do you take a sabbatical to research you don't research on um and you don't you don't actually research you just you, you research so to research james baldwin's books um that would be fine so research on isn't okay to research about that's also not okay you just research again redundant to research into well, again, redundant. To research on, again, not correct. And so all we're left with is E. To research the books James Baldwin wrote while he lived in France. So that's okay. And you might think that um, he is uh, ambiguous, um, but it makes sense. It's not actually ambiguous in this case. And this is why I say be careful with ambiguity because, well, what have we got? We've got while he lived in France. So he must be referring to uh, James Baldwin because otherwise, if it was referring to a professor, what does the sentence say? Well, it would say a professor at the university has taken a sabbatical to research while he lived in France. As in, it, it can't be has taken a sabbatical while he lived in France. It would be um, had taken because it, it would have been something that happened and is no longer happening because it says he lived in france okay so now we've got this question gusty westerly winds will continue to usher in a seasonally cool air mass into the region as a broad area of high pressure will build and bring fair and dry weather for several days so Again, just looking for trigger points. What I see here is we'll continue to usher in a seasonally cool air mass into the region. So that's redundant. You wouldn't you wouldn't say usher in into. Um, you'd either it would continue to usher in, or it would usher into the region. So um, we can just on that we can get rid of. A, B, okay, and so that leaves us with C, D, and E, um, so if we try C, Gusty westerly winds will continue to usher in a seasonally cool air mass to the region, a broad area of high pressure building, and bring fair and dry weather for several days. So, well, what, what, what does a broad area of high pressure building mean? Well, it's not, it's not parallel, as in, um, it, it, it can't be parallel to anything, therefore they must be describing something as a broad area of high pressure building, which doesn't describe anything either. So C is just nonsensical. Um, whereas D, gusty westerly winds will continue ushering a seasonably cool air mass in the region. So that's actually got the opposite problem with A and B, whereas they had um, uh, two redundant things telling us that it, they were ushering in a seasonally cool air mass. D doesn't actually tell us that 
there there's it doesn't have any information about the um transportation of the air mass it's just saying that gusty westerly winds will continue ushering a seasonally cool air mass that's already in the region which again is not what the sentence means so we get rid of d which leaves us with e gusty westerly winds will continue to usher a seasonally cool air mass into the region while a broad area of high pressure builds which will bring fair and dry weather for several days and so just checking with the witch well that must be referring to the broad area of high pressure which is fine because that can bring fair weather fair and dry weather for several days so e is good and it doesn't have the redundancy there's only uh, one into and so we're happy with e okay so a 1972 agreement between canada and the united states reduced the amount of phosphates that municipalities had been so that's past perfect and that's always a trigger allowed to drop dump into the great lakes so this question is actually quite tricky um but let's just think very carefully about what this sentence is actually saying so in 1972 there's an agreement and apparently well had been says that we're talking about the amount they were allowed to dump before this agreement so according to this first sentence even though it's very subtle what it's actually saying is that the amount they, they were allowed to dump a certain amount in the past and then this agreement went back into the past and reduced that amount that they were allowed which obviously is not what the sentence means as in if they did that then that would make all the municipalities get in trouble because they've broken the law uh, in the past which isn't really something that you're allowed to do um, when you pass new agreements so a is very subtle but actually completely wrong um b for a much easier reason again had been dumping so that's just you can't you can't reduce the amount the amount of force the phosphate amount that municipalities had already dumped so that's just not not correct Redu c reduces the phosphate amount municipalities municipalities have been allowed to dump so Well, it's a 1972 agreement. And so, although you could argue that reduces, because reduces is clearly the next choice we have, um, reduces is acceptable. It, it's probably more, in terms of what the sentence is trying to say, it's, tr it, it's meant to the fact that it was in 1972. So it's, it's meant to say that it, it did something in the past. So it reduced the amount it doesn't currently reduce well i mean it does but it's reduced would be far better than reduces so and also you can't have it c literally means it currently reduces the phosphate amount municipalities have been allowed to dump in the great lakes so it's arguing that it's currently doing the reducing which is not accurate it's already done the reduction so we can get rid of c d a 1972 agreement between canada and the united states reduced the amount of phosphates that municipalities are allowed to dump well that's good uh it's no not confusing and it definitely is the intended meaning of the sentence and so we can keep d and e uh we've got the same problem in terms of reduces and then reduces the amounts of phosphates allowed for dumping by municipalities well yeah i i mean i don't think that for that municipalities get a certain amount of phosphates and allow them for dumping it just that it's that suggests that they sort of get a bunch of phosphates and section them off in order to dump them which doesn't really make sense so we can get rid of e okay this question is very nasty 
Um, so don't worry if you find it quite difficult. Uh, what I would notice on this is it's a very long sentence with only a single underlined word. So we've really got to understand what's going on in the structure to do this. And because it's such a long sentence, what I want to do is just try and cut it down to its sentence core. So scientists have discovered what could be Well, scientists have discovered the largest organism on Earth, a giant fungus. And then what is a, what's, what's that is an interwoven filigree of mushrooms and root like tentacles? Well, that's just describing the giant fungus, right? So if we just, close that off there and well first of all I have to explain why I was able to close it off there rather than uh, saying that the filigree of mushrooms and root like tentacles were spawned by a single first fertilized spore I think um, it's it's more accurate to say that the, we've got the um, the mush the giant fungus was spawned by a single fertilized spore and also um, that's that's just description part of the sentence whereas the whole the whole point of the sentence is that um, we've got a giant fungus spawned by a single fertilized spore. And so a giant fungus. So if I get rid of this, we've got the colon sort of goes straight after a giant fungus. So we've got a giant fungus spawned by a single fertilized spore, a giant fungus extending for more than 30 acres in the soil of a Michigan forest. So it's just A. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, pretty horrible question here. Um, Let's just try and make sense of it. So Emily Dickinson's letters, Susan Huntington Dickinson, were written over a period beginning a few years before Susan's marriage to Emily's brother and ending shortly before Emily's death in 1886, outnumbering her letters to anyone else. Okay, so here I see a trigger of and, and so what's, what's that? Well, it's nice and easy to figure out. We've got beginning and ending, so that's nice and parallel, so that's fine. Uh, whereas in B, so we can keep A for now, um, just based on parallelism, whereas for B, we've got over a period that begins and ended. So that's that's not correct. It should be that begins and that ends. Um, and C, over a period beginning and that ends, same problem. D, Okay, so we've got we've got beginning and we do have ending, but we don't have and ending. So let's actually try and figure out what's what's happened here. So Emily Dickinson's letters to Susan Huntington Dickinson, which okay, so what's that describing? Well, if you're taking which two literally, you can say, okay, well, it's just describing Susan Huntington Dickinson, but that's not actually the case because we've got the fact that which can refer to a whole noun phrase. And so the whole noun phrase is actually this. Like, what are we actually talking about when we, we're talking about the sentence? Well, it's just, it's it's one thing. It's the letters. Uh, so that's fine. So the letters, which were written over a period beginning a few years before Susan's marriage to Emily's brother. And then then that, that bit of description, because which is just showing, that, that part is just description. So then we can just get rid of it. And so what are we left with? We're left with Emily Dickinson's letters to Susan Huntington Dickinson ending shortly before Emily's death in 1886. Well, did the letters themselves end shortly before Emily's death in 1886? Um, I suppose they, they could have. You could argue that. I'm not, not a fan of it. Um, 
And then and outnumbering her letters to anyone else. Well, what so? Uh, we don't actually have a sentence. Because if, if we say that's parallelism, well, it's, it's certainly not a new clause. So if we say it's parallelism, well, we've got the letters ending shortly before Emily's death and outnumbering her letters to anyone else. And then the, the sentence ends, but there's no, we, we need an actual sentence as in that's just description. It's all description about the letters and there's nothing actually happening. So we can get rid of D. And then E, Emily's, so the letters which were written over a period beginning a few years before Susan's marriage to Emily's brother and ending shortly before Emily's death in 1886. So now again, that's just description. And so we've got, what have we got? The letters outnumber her letters to anyone else. So that seems quite good. So we can keep E. And so now we just need to compare A and E. And I would say that, well, first of all, we go by what does the sentence really want to talk about? Um, I would say that the whole point is that the letters outnumber uh, her letters to anyone else, whereas, so E makes that clear, whereas uh, A just has that as a bit of extra information. But the biggest problem with A, I would say, is that um, if you have, since outnumbering her letters to anyone else is just extra information, well, that really has no no reason, there's no reason why it's not all the way back here. And so the structure just isn't as good as E, whereas E just has um, the letters, some descriptive information, and then the fact that they outnumber her letters to anyone else. So we can pick E. Okay. With the patience of its customers and with its network strained to the breaking point, the online service company announced a series of new initiatives trying to relieve the congestion that has led to at least four class action lawsuits and thousands of complaints from frustrated customers. So we've got parallelism in terms of here with this and. Um, and we've also got this decision point. And so I actually think the decision point trying to relieve is going to be the easier one to talk about, because if we think about what's actually going on and take it very literally, the online service company announced a series of new initiatives. And why have they, what have they, what, which one is correct? If you sort of take it away uh, from this sentence and just say, so say, I announced a series of new initiatives to try to relieve something. So I think C is looking best. And now let's see if we can try and explain why the other ones don't work. So they announced a series of new initiatives trying to relieve. Well, who's doing the trying? Is it the initiatives? Well, no, the initiatives, initiatives can't try, initiatives just do. Um, and so um, it's the network service company doing the trying. Um, but that's a bit sort of unclear. So and okay. Uh, Whereas, so, but we'll keep A for now. B, the online service company announced a new, a series of new initiatives that try to relieve. Well, do the initiatives try to relieve? No, the initiatives just do whatever you tell them to do, um, whatever they're created to do. So initiatives can't try to do anything. So as in the network, the, the online service company can try to do things, but the initiatives themselves just exist. They can't try to do anything. Um, C, 
the online service company announced a series of new initiatives to try to relieve. Well, that makes it much clearer that uh, it's the online service company announcing the initiatives in order to try to relieve the congestion. So I'm going to keep C, as in it's it's not unclear with who's doing the trying. Um, D announced a series of initiatives to try relieving the congestion. So what does that mean? Well, it means that they've got a series of initiatives and they know that they can relieve the congestion. Um, so they've done that and they're, they're choosing to relieve the congestion just to see if that helps. Um, whereas that's not actually what's going on. It's that they've, uh, they're have they trying to relieve the congestion. They don't know that they can. Um, it's not that they want to uh, try relieve like relieve the congestion and see if that helps it's that they want to try and relieve it so d is out and e is out for exactly the same reason and so we've got a choice between a and c where c is superior so far just for the lack of ambiguity is there anything else we can find um No, there's really not very much else. I mean, I suppose you could argue that the with in A is sort of redundant having both of them, but that's not a very strong point. So really the only choice we have, because they're so similar, the only choice we have is that this ambiguity about, you know, are they announcing a series of initiatives to try to relieve or are they announcing it a new series of new initiatives trying to relieve? And that's just ambiguous. We don't know if it's the initiatives trying or the company. So We'll get rid of A and pick C. Okay. Oh, that first word. Schistosomiasis, uh, I guess. A disease caused by a parasitic worm is prevalent in hot, humid climates, and it has become more widespread as irrigation projects have enlarged the habitat of the freshwater snails that are the parasites hosts for part of its life cycle. So we've got a bunch of pronouns and plurals and things like that going on. So what have we got? We've got the parasite. So parasites, so as in a singular parasite. Um, and so we probably want a singular parasite. So um, we've got the in A, the freshwater snails that are the parasites hosts. So the snails, plural, are the hosts, fine, for part of its life cycle. Well, good, because we're talking about the parasite's life cycle. So A seems fine. Freshwater snails that are the parasites hosts for in part of their life cycle. Well, there must be referring to snails and we're not talking about the snails life cycles so b is out uh which become the parasites hosts for part of its life cycles its life cycles that doesn't make sense unless it has multiple life cycles which doesn't make any sense um freshwater snails which become the hosts of the parasite during the parasites life cycles again just you can't have plural life cycles. And then freshwater snails, which become their hosts during their life cycles. Well, again, just their life cycles, which should really be life cycle, but also we must be talking about their freshwater snails, and we're not talking about those, we're talking about the parasites. So we get rid of E, and A is the only option. Okay. Last week, local shrimpers held a news conference to take some credit for the resurgence of the rare Kemp Ridley's turtle, saying that their compliance with laws requiring that turtle excluder devices be on shrimp nets protect adult sea turtles. Okay, so... 
Well, we've got a bunch of extra descriptive information, long, very long sentence that's completely um, uh, superfluous. So, shrimpers held a conference to take credit for the resurgence of of the turtle saying that their compliance with laws and then we've got description of the laws so this this is all just description requiring that turtle excluded devices be on shrimp nets protect adult sea turtles so let's read that sentence shrimp has held a news com well shrimp, shrimp has held a conference to take credit for the resurgence of the turtle saying that their compliance with laws protect adult sea turtles so that actually should, just by cutting everything out, we realize it should be protects. That was the only proper problem. So we can get rid of A. And so in B, we've got saying that their compliance with laws, description, description, is protecting adult sea turtles. So that sounds fine. So we can keep A. Their compliance with laws protect, same problem. Their compliance with laws are protecting. Well, it's, it's their compliance, singular. So it's compliance is protecting. So D is out. And their compliance with laws Okay, so we've got is protecting. Um, so the only difference is requiring turtle excluded devices on shrimp nets versus, so we've got requiring versus to require. Um, and hopefully it's clear that you have laws requiring things, not laws to require. As in, I suppose laws to require, it would suggest that it's in the future. Um, if if it makes sense can make sense at all and it's clearly not in the future it's currently so we get rid of e and the answer is b